Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to edit and upload your images for Jet Photos. I just wanted to show my profile really quickly because I've seen some editing tutorials on YouTube and the people discussing how to edit the images have an acceptance ratio below 50% with less than 5 or 10 images in the database. So I just wanted to show you at the time of filming this video I have 84.25% acceptance ratio and 736 images in the database. On top of that, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, um, three of my images were in the top five for today's most popular, and you can see that from the screenshot here where I was the top photographer for the last 24 hours. Other than that, let's just jump straight into the edit. Okay guys, so once you've come back from the airport, you're gonna wanna go and upload your image to Adobe Lightroom, and it's gonna come up like this. You're going to want to make sure, first of all, that your image is sharp because you don't want to waste your time editing and you find out it's a soft image and you can't use it anyway. So the first thing we're going to go and do, I'm going to zoom in and we're going to have a look at the sharpness of the image. We can see this image is nice and sharp. Uh, you can read the aircraft name, the uh, registration down here, the airline name logos, the aircraft type, the registration on the fuselage and even the registration on the tail up here. So it's nice and sharp. I know I can proceed. Didn't, don't need to delete this image. I can stick with this image here. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead up here to the crop and rotate tool. Uh, go and find an aspect ratio. So for jet photos, uh, the smallest aspect ratio you can have is a 4.3 and the largest aspect ratio you can have is a 16.9. Uh, anywhere in between those is fine. I'm um, going to go ahead and choose a 16.9. I just like that as personal preference for these kind of looking images. It's my favourite aspect ratio. Uh, next up, I'm going to go and level the image. I know that uh, uploaders struggle with this one. It's one of the most common rejections. Myself, I even sometimes struggle with it now, and I really struggled with it when I uh, initially started uploading. Um, the most important thing to remember is to use vertical references using buildings first. If there's no buildings, then you can use poles. If there's no poles, then you have to resort to a horizontal reference such as the runway or taxiway. However, try use buildings and if there's no buildings, use poles and use horizontal references as a last resort. I've got buildings in the background here, so I'm going to use these two because they're closest to the fuselage of the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and that's looking pretty good to me about there plus 0.77 so now that I've leveled the image and we can even double check the leveling with not just the buildings but taxiway sign down here and um, if I pull up the lines you can see that it's pretty level there okay so now plus 0.77 now I'm going to want to go ahead and finish the crop. If I leave the crop like this, I will get a dead space or a too far rejection. Um, so some people, they like to crop in really tight, something like this, even a little bit tighter. Personally, go for it, that's fine. But as I said, personally, I prefer to go a little bit bigger of a crop, um, let the aircraft breathe, but each to their own, no judging. This is why... Um, this is why we take photos of planes and it's an art because everyone has their, each, uh, their own style and that's what I love about it, everyone's different. So find what works for you, but as I said, make sure it's not cropped too far away from the aircraft, otherwise you will get a dead space rejection. Uh, next up, we need to center the image. So you want to try to get the center of the fuselage in the center of the image for uh, takeoff and landing shots where the aircraft is on an angle, it's a little bit different. Um, I'll explain that in a different video if um, this one does well and you like this one. But for, yeah, just nice side-ons, um, you want to use these references here on the side to line up to the middle. So that's looking pretty good there. And you can use the bottom line and bottom of the fuselage. Make sure that's a similar distance away from the top of the fuselage and the top line which looks pretty good there so I'm going to go ahead and click enter now that that's done it's looking pretty good there I'm going to go over here to the healing brush on the mode go ahead click heal the size that just depends on the dust spot and then feathering and opacity I go 100 
Then over here, we've got visualize spots. Go ahead, click on that one, and it's going to pull up your dust spots. So I've got a dust spot here. I literally just hover over it and click, and it's removed. Same for the dust spot over here. Hover over it, click, and it is removed. Next up, going to go over to the edit. Scroll right down to the bottom. We've got remove chromatic aberration and enable lens corrections. We want to tick both boxes. Um, that's going to remove the chromatic aberration from the image and down here the lens corrections will remove distortion and the lens vignetting. If um, your lens that you use for the image isn't in here or it's incorrect, just go ahead and change that. Now we're going to scroll back up to the top. Um, in terms of exposure, we have the histogram up here. This is quite important. Before I explain the histogram, I need to make this very important. The histogram is purely a guide. It is only a guide. Do not uh, use this to determine your whole image. Just use this to help if um, it's 50-50 on some sort of things or it's yeah, it's really just a guide, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, just explain it super quick, as quick as I can. Um, basically on the left hand side here we got the blacks. So if I slide the blacks down, we can see the blacks move over here. The right hand side is the whites. So if I slide the whites up, the whites move over here. And basically the perfect histogram is going to be a nice amount of blacks, nice amount of whites, which represent your contrast because too much contrast and there's too many blacks and whites, not enough and there's not enough blacks and whites. And then the main clump for the exposure, you want that ideally in the middle. However, it's not a perfect world and that's not gonna happen most of the time, but you wanna try keep it mostly in the middle because if the clump's up the top over here, it's probably gonna be overexposed. If the clump's down the bottom, it's likely gonna be underexposed. But as I said before, it's a guide. So if the image, um, you know, if you're, Histogram is all in the middle, but your image looks like this, then you know that it's overexposed and you're going to have to adjust that accordingly. So initially we can see that the image has a decent amount of contrast, it's well exposed. I'm just going to bump the exposure up a little bit. Um, that looks pretty nice about there. Got a little bit more. Yep, go 20. Now in terms of contrast, I like to start up as a base point, go 40. And then if it's not enough, I'll add more if it's too much. I'll drop it down, but that's looking pretty good. Um, next up, we've got highlights and shadows. Guys, please don't touch this. Um, if you're getting over-processed or bad processing images, it is quite likely from the highlights or down here, texture. Do not ever use texture. Do not ever use the highlights or the shadows. That's just going to be bad processing, over-processed images, and you're going to get editing halos, which is going to lead to those rejections. Down here we've got the whites, so with the histogram I like to go to the white arrow, that's generally how I know if I've got enough contrast, enough whites, enough blacks. Um, so if I pull the whites up to the white arrow, we can see there, the white arrow. However the image, it just looks like there's too many highlights here, so I'm going to back off on the whites. As I said, the histogram's a guide, I can already see there's some whites there, so I'm going to leave that as is. In terms of the blacks, I'm going to add some blacks in, there we go, we've got the white arrow, okay white arrow is gone, bring it back up, negative 5 gives me the white arrow, doesn't look like there's too many blacks, so when you trust the Instagram, that's looking pretty good. Next down is colour, the white balance, in terms of the temperature, increasing temperature, yellow yellow tint, decreasing temperature, um, the blue tint, so it's a bit of a yellow tint there, obviously it's turning into gold now, so you can always bring the yellow up, however you can get a manipulation rejection if you're faking sunsets, that kind of stuff, so just be careful with that. Um, however, I've got a yellow tint here, um, not the biggest fan of that, so I'm just going to bring the tint down, um, yeah, that temperature there, 5,500, right around numbers, <laughs> the OCD, so yeah, so that's looking pretty good there, I like that. Um, if you're ever shooting through windows, double glaze windows, terminals, yeah, any windows, you're probably going to find your original image. It's going to have a green tint, something like this to it. Um, to remove that, you just increase the tint so it's purple tint and that's going to remove that for you. Um, but again, vibrant saturation, don't touch these. That's going to be bad colour, like hue, saturation, manipulation, over-processing, bad processing. That's all from vibrant saturation. So, yeah, just leave those alone. 
slide past the effects again. As I said before, don't touch these. Next up, sharpening noise reduction. The last thing in the Lightroom processing. These are very important. So I'll zoom back in. We can see from before the image is still sharp. Um, on a standard image, my standard go-to is 80 sharpening. If the image is a little bit soft, I'll go as much as 100. However, do not go above 100. I'll show you what happens. You go full sharpening. You can see jagged edges, and that's going to lead to over sharpening. So I'm going to go back down to my usual 80. We can see what that does, it sharpens it quite nicely. However, you can see the grain on the tarmac in the background on the on the hills here. So we need to remove that grain quite simply. Noise reduction. How much? Again, personal preference. I tend to go for 30 if there's a little bit more noise because I've shot at a higher ISO or I've required a bit more sharpening because it's a slightly softer image. I'll go up to 50. But again, if you max it out. Yes, it's going to remove the grain, but it's going to create a blurred, washed over effect and the image is going to be soft. So I'm going to go for my usual, which is 30, 80, 30, and that's looking pretty nice now. Now that the image is done, I have a quick look again, and I'm just going to touch up a few things. I'm just going to, as you can see here, it's looking like it's lacking a little bit of white. So since I changed the temperature, um, it's just change the colour a little bit on the image. I'm going to play with the whites again. You can see what the white arrow does. Uh, white arrow, there we go. That's actually looking quite nice now. So I've just hit the two white arrows. As soon as you hit them, that's generally pretty good. Um, that's a good guide. Um, so yeah, we can see it's looking pretty good. Yes, the histogram looks like it has a lot of whites and not as many blacks, but initially to the eye, you can see that it looks good and the histogram shows that nothing's blown out of proportion so it's been used well as a guide now it's time to export just go up here hit the export custom settings if you're new to jet photos you haven't uploaded or you've only had a few uploads you're only allowed a maximum resolution of 1280 pixels so you can't go above that otherwise it won't let you upload it for everyone no matter how many photos you uploaded, you can't go below 1,224. Uh, if you've got a slightly soft image, then 1,024 is going to be better. If it's a sharp image, 1,280 works well. Once you get above 50 images in the database at an acceptance ratio of above 50%, you'll be allowed to upload up to 1,920 pixels. So that's going to increase the resolution. So for this image here, Oops, which is nice and sharp. Zoom in, looks quite nice. Oh, and that's going to look quite nice at 1920 pixels. So you're going to go ahead, click enter there. Uh, under more options, you can name the, uh, the image. I've got that here. Um, the registration, uh, it's for Jet Photos and YouTube. Oh, what's going on here? Uh, I'm going to try that again. Not sure what happened there, but that's looking pretty good. Just gonna wait for this to load up and show you guys what it's looking like. There we go, nice and sharp. So export. I have a Jet Photos folder on my desktop, so I upload from this folder. So go ahead. I'm gonna click export. It's gonna go into my folder, and then we're gonna now go ahead and go to the last step, which is uploading onto Jet Photos itself, and we're gonna check out the screener tools and make any adjustments where it's needed. Okay guys, so now that the edit is finished, you want to jump onto jetphotos.com, it's the main page here, and on the top right you have upload photos, so you're going to want to click on that, <coughs> brings you to this page here, um, and you're going to want to click upload photo, so I'm going to go to my jet photos, and on the image I've just edited. I'm going to put it in here, the registration VH, VYZ. The four letter I code for Adelaide is YPAD, so YPAD. Click autofill and Jet Photos is going to automatically fill that out for me. Um, the airport location, the aircraft, the operator, um, the photo date. You can even put in some remarks if you want to, um, 
I'm just going to put the resolution, which is 1920 pixels. In the categories, I don't need to pick any of these. Um, you can check the guidelines to see if you need to click any of these. Um, it's borderline night shot, but I'm not going to click that one. And it's none of the aircraft specific ones. I showed it with my 5D Mark III and 100-400. That is not required, but you can do that if you want. Um, it's not a new livery, and it's not the first aircraft, I mean, registration database, so don't need to click it for hot photo. Uh, no comments, the screen is needed. I'm going to go ahead, click upload. Now, up here, we have the option to add a watermark. You can go ahead and do that if you would like to. Now, up top, you can go where your email is, click photos. Then, if I scroll down here, we've got manage queued photos. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click on that. It's going to bring me to my queue of photos. You scroll down to the bottom, and I've got my image here. I'm going to click on that, and this is going to show me my image, and it's basically what the screeners themselves will see. So I can see here, again, first thing, check the sharpness. It's nice and sharp. The whole image is in focus. And then down the bottom, we've got the screen tools. Um, this is what the screeners use to screen images. So I'm going to start out with check for dust. Click on that. And it's going to bring up the CMOS scan. And we can see there's no dust. There was a dust spot here and a dust spot up there. That's now gone. Um, dust mode will also show you any editing halos and I'll try to bring up a photo for you guys to show you what that looks like. Um, the next along is the histogram again, this was only a guide so we can see nothing seems to be too blown out. I mean the whites are a little bit concerning but it's not a big issue there. You can see nothing's overexposed so that is totally okay. I uh, don't bother with the, uh, the red, green, blue histogram Next up is the horizon. I'm going to click on that one there and it's going to pull up the horizon. So if I check with the buildings in the background, yeah, we can see that that is perfectly level to the buildings in the background. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm even leveled with the taxi sign there, but that's only a secondary reference. But yeah, it's looking pretty good there. I'd say that's pretty level and I'm happy with that. Let's double check it, and yep, yeah, that's quite nice. That should be okay. Lastly, is the center tool with the composition, and we can see that that's pretty much perfectly centered. So I'm going to leave that as is. Don't bother with magnify, that's not needed. So that's perfect now, that's done, and leave it in the queue for screening. Well, there we go, guys. That's the final product after nine days in the queue. The image has now been accepted, and it is now in the database. Thanks for watching and I hope that helps you guys with editing and uploading your images for Jet Photos.